what's up, everybody, and welcome to this edition of On a Couch Talking Sports Social Distancing Edition. As always, I'm Robbie, joined, as always, by Kyle. Kyle, how are you tonight? Hey, not too bad. How are you? Doing Come well, on. doing well. Yeah, Coming here from the game room, from the Kyle Souza game room. Yeah, right here. Boom, got my records, got my video games. Boom, here we go. Yep, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Very good. Kyle was getting his pre-show gaming in um, a little while while we were waiting to come on air. And uh, joining us tonight is someone that you've become accustomed to seeing and hearing here on On A Couch Talking Sports. He is joining us live in person via the magic of uh, quarantine Zoom action. Uh, our pal Doug is back. Hey, Doug. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. 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 How how are you? How is how is life in uh in social distancing going for you? Uh, in one word, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, yeah. You 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 have to be positive and make the best of it, but uh, it's um not good. It sucks. Yeah, it really it's sucks. Not, it's not, yeah. not, not, not not good. Not good. Not that not, not ideal, right? Not uh, yeah, ideal. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily suggest this when when we're all free and clear and everything's good. I wouldn't suggest this for somebody who's actually going to quarantine themselves for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're but, thinking of self quarantining, right. probably not the best idea to do right, that. Right. Exactly. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but but hey, listen. I'm, I'm really I'm glad to be on with you guys. I thank you guys yeah. for for having me on again. I'm I'm very super excited about um, uh, the opportunity to to talk about our our theme for tonight talk about what we're going to talk about so I'm thrilled to be here and again thank you guys for letting me on thrilled to have you as always uh, no question speaking of tonight's topic perfect segue as Doug's point to his head um, we're going to sort of continue with our theme of the last few episodes and sort of do a little bit of a retrospective and reflection on certain teams uh, around professional sports. So the team we're going to go for tonight is the 2010-2011 Stanley Cup champion, Boston Bruins. That's right. It was a very exciting year in Bruins history as the Bruins captured, what, captured the Stanley Cup trophy. And obviously all of us remember it well. And crazy to think that it was almost 10 years ago that that happened. Uh, so I want to obviously, you know, as we always do with guests, I want to start out with Doug and just sort of ask Doug off the top, you know, before we get specifically into different games and stuff like that from that season, just when you think back to that 2010-2011 Bruins season, what sort of overall thoughts, general thoughts come to mind? I think the first thought that comes to my head, Robbie, is the fact that my mother-in-law was around and she basically bled um, gold and black. Um, we had the opportunity to be able to, she just wanted to see him win. She was actually in the building when Bobby Orr scored the goal. Um, and wow. yeah, so she was part of the gallery, the original gallery gods. And uh, that's probably the, yeah, that's probably the first thought that comes to my head. It's not even a Bruins thought really, except for the fact that um, she loved hockey didn't matter what hockey it was, could have been the bean pot. She loved watching the bean pot too. So uh, she could care less what, what kind of hockey game it was. She even, I think there was a, there was some, I think there was a high school game that was on Nesson once and she was watching that. I said, Marilyn, what are you doing? Why are you watching <laughs> high school hockey? She's like, I just love hockey. Um, what if you got against high school hockey though? No, 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 I don't have anything against high school hockey. <laughs> not going there, Robbie, not going there. But, but I think, but I think what, it, what it comes down to is, is that my, my thought process was is that just, just watching her face, just watching how she used to watch these guys in the garden so many years ago. She had tickets, season tickets from 55 to 75. And again, was in the building most of the time. If she wasn't in the building, she was watching it on TV. So my thoughts go to my mother-in-law because, and then we were able to bring her to the alumni games and actually she was actually able to talk to her heroes that she wow. was actually watching on the ice. And just incredible just to yeah. see her face because she actually got to 
talk to them and they were talking to her and we brought her to like six or eight of them or something. They actually started to recognize her. Oh yeah, you were at the last one, last no my game. And they were talking to her and stuff like that. So I think my first thought was, was basically game seven. We brought her, we were living in New Hampshire at the time. We brought her up to New Hampshire to watch on a big screen TV, which she didn't have at the time a big screen TV, 42 inch, and we got a chance for her to see that final game. And she was just over the top. So that's, when I think of that year and that series and that, and we watched a lot of the games because we were over her house, we watched a lot of games, we watched a lot of playoff games with her um, because we just did. But that's really the first thought that I have is just seeing her face in the, absolute complete joy of her watching her Bruins as she called it her Bruins <laughs> winning again seeing it again um yeah. the other thing that I loved was is we'll tell this really quick story is the fact that she couldn't stand the referees okay <laughs> so <laughs> once they and and let me tell you you didn't want to really be around when they made a bad call because she would take her oh. off and toss it at the tv <laughs> um she actually broke some things not at, not at my not at our house but at her own house she broke a couple things just by throwing just by getting mad that's a fan that yeah. is a true blue fan yeah. right there so that's kind of what i remember in a kind of a long-winded way yeah, and Kyle, the same question to you, just sort of, what are your thoughts when you think back, again, almost a decade now, which is crazy to think about, uh, just sort of when you think back to that time and that Bruins season and Cupper, what sort of overall thoughts go through your mind? Well, um, I will begin by saying, um, I, I guess it didn't have as much of an impact on me as, as like, say, the Red Sox winning, or um, so... Um, but it was still really like, it, it's still, I, I still remember it, um, pretty well for the most part. Like, I don't, I'm trying to remember if I actually went to any games during that season. I think, I, I think we, we may have actually gone to a couple of games that season, right? Did we, or? We, you know we, what? I, I, I think we may have gone to at least one. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, the one thing I do remember was, um, I remember after they had gotten the cup, I remember going to a Red Sox game actually that same spring. And then actually having the Red Sox, you know, kind of remind us and pre present the uh, the Bruins with the tro or kind of like you know or kind of show off the trophy during the, one of the Red Sox game, but th which I thought was pretty cool. So, uh, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was great. Like uh, um, overall, because you know people know that I am a Canadian fan. Yes, I am. I if I had to choose between the Bruins and the Canadians, it would definitely be the Canadians. And yes, I know that made pretty much. Everyone here and in Boston <laughs> upset, <laughs> but <laughs> um, at the end of the day, honestly, Bruins—they're they're still my number two. So um, hey, second, second is the worst, right? Um, so uh, I, you know, I still feel really good for them. It's not like I—I'm not one of those Canadians fans that actually hates the Bruins. I'm not like. I'm at a weird kind of like halfway point, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, well, it's kind of funny you say that because obviously um the Bruins played the Canadians in that uh first round playoff series uh that year and uh it was a very exciting series and the Bruins defeated the Canadians for games to three in the game seven game winning goal scored by Nathan Horton which actually Kyle and I have uh done our own sort of put our own sort of broadcasting uh towards in one of our episodes we actually uh, that was, if you remember, Kyle, the episode where we sort of dubbed our voices over the announcers, which was pretty wild. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Kyle. I, earlier on, gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, Kyle, I, got, I, I have to ask, as uh, someone who sort of supports the Canadians over the Bruins, uh, <laughs> how, did, how did you feel sort of about the, uh, about the Bruins knocking out the Habs that year in the, in the playoffs? <laughs> well yeah you know I mean that's that's always where it gets really tricky in my book where uh you know you see your favorite team get knocked off by your second favorite team so you're like oh ooh, ooh, ooh. but <laughs> <laughs> so you know there's definitely like worse I think losses that could have happened there's definitely like 
you know, other teams that I probably wouldn't have liked as much that, that would have, that could have knocked off Canada. But um, at the same time, like, you know what, at the end of the day, you know, like it, it was, it was the Bruins year. They, they really performed that year. And I think they, they really, they really, they deserved it. You know, they, they had a great season. They had a great team that year. So at the end of the day, you know, as sad as it was to see the Canadians lose, uh, you know, I, I was just about as happy to see them, the Bruins win. So, you know. And, and Doug, Doug, for you and I, true Bruins fans, uh, <laughs> it was definitely a tough start to that series because the Bruins actually fell behind two games to none, losing two games at home to the Canadians, and then, you know, bounced back to win four out of uh, the last five games. So let me go to you here, Doug. That Bruin, that first round series, I mean, being the true Bruins fan that you are, I mean, just how – thrilling and fitting was it for that to see them knock off the uh the evil the evil empire that is not the Yankees <laughs> but the Montreal Canadiens <laughs> um it was it was pretty thrilling the, the issue I had was is the fact that they did get down uh you know two games to none yeah. and I was like and, I was at game my, two of that series and that yeah. was brutal that was I literally I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna be completely honest here, I had a hard time seeing them winning that series after that second game. I'll, I'll be, I'll come right out and say it. I had I a very hard time too. seeing them winning that series after they dropped the first two games at home. I did too, and my mother in law thought the same thing too. And I said, Look, there's still games left, it's okay, you know who these guys are. I think, interestingly enough, after they won this series and basically came back. I had, I just had a feeling, and my mother-in-law had probably had a more feeling than I did, but she had a feeling once they won this particular series, she had that feeling, she turned to me and she said, they're going to win it this year. And wow. after that series was over, she, she kind of predicted, um, just to me, quietly. Um, probably, I think my wife heard it too, but because she was next to me, so I'm assuming she heard it, but I don't know. Uh, but she had said quietly, she said, this is, this, this is the team right here. But it, it was gratifying. And again, um, <laughs> it's like Red Sox Yankees. It's like Montreal is, is, I guess, considered the evil empire. But the fact is, is that, you know, they've had, they've had some really, really amazing players on their team. And the, 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 you know, there's just a rivalry there. That's all. That's all. And there are some yeah. Montreal fans that, that are, and if you look at the stadiums, you'll see, if you look at the rinks, you'll see that there are Bruins fans at the Canadian games. So oh, yeah. the Canadians, they're and, actually yeah, Bruins fans. Uh, yeah. So, and vice well, there are versa. Also, there are also a lot of Canadian fans who come to Boston for, for right. those games as well. Right. I just know one thing that we're not allowed to play the Canadian national anthem even today, and she's been gone six plus years now we still canadians they if the, the bruins are playing the canadians we turn the sound off we mute it we turn it down there is no canadian national anthem in this house i have a, <laughs> this is her house that's probably why because i have a feeling that uh she'll show up somewhere or, or well, i don't know what will happen so we just don't do it it was it was one of those things that you know one of those um superstitions that she had Right. Um, that you just don't do. But again, I, I thought that, you know, I, I had a really, really good feeling after they had come back and, and, and beaten the Canadians. And, and the thought process was that, hey, maybe this is the, maybe this really is the team. So, you know, that's, that, that was my thoughts right there. Yeah. Good I series though. I, good series. Yeah. I think that the series that really stood I mean, obviously that Canadian series really did stand out for me. Uh, but I think the other series that really stood out for me, besides the cup finals, obviously, was the following series against uh, the Flyers, where the Bruins actually swept the Philadelphia Flyers uh, to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. And the reason for that is because um, they had played in the playoffs the year before, and uh, the Flyers knocked them out in kind of heartbreaking fashion. Not going to go too deeply into that series, uh, but uh, to see Doug, and I want to sort of Doug, I want to bring you in 
to sort of start off this particular series because like I said, the the way that the year before had ended and the fact that, you know, what what happened in that final series to then see them the next year turn around and beat the Flyers the way they did was just very to me, just a very rewarding feeling to have. I mean, it was definitely it just like I said, to sweep them nonetheless was just really a really fitting, a really fitting way to uh, to advance. Given, like I said, what had happened the year before. Yeah, Robbie. One word: revenge. Yes, <laughs> absolutely perfect. Uh, my wife cannot stand the Flyers. Um, there's a couple guys on there that are a little nasty. They're oh, at least in that series there was, um, if I remember correctly. But still, it was absolute complete revenge. Uh, I thought it was. I was absolutely ju- I was in jubilation. Um, just maybe that's not a great word, but uh, <laughs> very, very excited about the fact that not only did we beat them, but we swept them, um, and we basically kicked their ass um, all over the place um, and got absolute revenge from from the year before. So that was that was huge, and, and again, continuing that thought process of hey, wait a minute, there's something special here. I, I'm not sure what it is yet, but there's something going on here, and right. I'm liking it. Yeah, and, and Kyle, obviously, you know, we know the Bruins, Canadians is a big rivalry, but the Bruins and Flyers definitely have a little bit of a rivalry themselves, and, to, and you know, to see them defeat them in the playoffs the way they did, Kyle, I mean, anytime you could beat, a, you know, two rivals in a row, it definitely is a, is a special – occurrence oh my god yeah no it was not i mean i think doug said it best you know it was it was a the perfect revenge it was uh um i really i mean the flyers i'm so yeah i'm so happy they beat the flyers uh i mean granted i i don't have like i mean i, I guess maybe i i should watch a little more hockey to maybe decide if i if there's teams that i really like dislike but um you know as it was like like i said i, I think the the bruins they just showed um a really strong especially end of the season for them they they did a they really pulled through you know so i think they really deserve that win so yeah definitely and then you know for the bruins they moved on to the uh, eastern conference finals where they uh defeat another thrilling series against the tampa bay lightning uh which they won in seven games style again another seven games sort of a theme of that playoffs was seven game series uh, won by the Bruins and they won one to nothing on a third period goal by Horton in you know game seven of the Eastern Conference final series against Lightning. So Kyle, like just sort of, you know, pretend for a moment like you were a professional hockey player to be able to be in a game seven uh, and to be able to score the game-winning goal, a game-winning goal like that, I mean, that's got to be a pretty special feeling. Definitely, if anybody was going to do it, Nathan Horton was a, a prime candidate that season. But that, that must have been a very special feeling for him to be able to to send the Bruins to the cup finals like that. Oh, yeah. It was just like like a really – it was like the one play that really made like that, you know, that huge impact there. And, um, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, and Doug, I mean – Again, that series, again, a thriller, you know, game seven at home. And like I said, Horton with the lone goal in the third period to win it. Just sort of take us through, uh, I mean, just that lightning series from your perspective and memory. Because, I mean, you know, I, I, I just specifically remember that moment where, you know, Horton scoring the game winner. I, I got to be honest, there's not a whole lot more from that Tampa series that I remember, Doug, but <laughs> that, that goal by Horton, I, I think, will will stand out when I think back to that Bruins Cup run, will sort of stand out in infamy uh, when it comes to moments from that series. I totally agree, Robbie. I think that um, that series, and I'll tell you, even to this day, that series is probably one of the best series I have seen in, in professional hockey in a really long time. And it continues today because I haven't seen, you know, a, a Bruins series like that. 
um, you know, in recent memory that, that I know of, uh, that the Bruins, I mean, it was just an amazing series. Uh, you obviously, obviously you want the Bruins to win. Um, but I, I think there was a lot of times that um, they're just such a fast team um, and to, you know, Tampa Bay just being such a, a, a fast and a great team and having, having a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the guys there that are, um, you know, really, really great players. I, I think in, in some cases, you know, trying to keep up with them, you know, was, was really difficult. Uh, but I thought that they, I thought that they played great. Um, and again, just you were on your edge of your seat every single game. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's just, that's really what I remember about it is, is that excitement of, you know, wow, this is, this is a great seven game series. And that's really what I remember. But again, I think you're right. I think the Horton goal was probably, you know, one of those, one of those, like, that's what I remember about the series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is just having that, that one small, but absolutely ginormous thing that happened. Um, and I think, I think having that gave them the momentum to go into the finals. Um, I thought they had tremendous amount of momentum going into the finals. And I'll tell you, um, you know, just, just having that in itself, um, I thought was, was, was definitely, obviously it was game winning goal. So it's not necessarily the key to the <laughs> series. Um, um, <laughs> you can't really say that. Uh, but I just thought it was a tremendous series. And I remember being on the edge of my seat. And I also remember, um, I also just, just remember that Horton goal was, was huge too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's perfect segue into that final series because it's interesting that you sort of talk about momentum because the Bruins actually dropped uh, the first two games of that final series in Vancouver. Uh, yeah. uh, it's had some interesting moments there, Doug. But I think the thing – and it's unfortunate that this moment occurred, but it did kind of change the momentum of that series was game three at the Garden. You know, Nathan Horton taking a just vicious – blindside, dirty, whatever you want to call it, hit by Aaron Rome. I still remember the guy's name to this day. Uh, and, um, you know, unfortunately had to miss the rest of that series. But, I mean, that really did propel the Bruins a lot of ways because they basically, in a lot of senses, sort of took that series over, Doug, from that moment on, especially at home. And, then, of course, game seven, you know, in Vancouver – and it's kind of interesting, and we'll sort of tell you, we could kind of touch on this as well. But Horton also had kind of a role that gave seven taking the always remember him taking the guard ice and dumping it out onto the Vancouver Arena before a game, making seven. it home ice. Uh, yeah, making it home ice. Making uh, it home definitely. ice. That's what he was trying to do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, just after those first two games, you know, for them, for you know, unfortunately for Horton to get hurt, but then for sort of them to you know, use that as a catalyst to really get back to that series was was big. Again, you don't like to see a guy get hurt like that, but it was it was kind of the turning point of that series, I feel like, in a lot of ways. I think you're absolutely right. I think it was a turning point. I think that it's it's almost like they were playing for him in, in some yeah. ways. Um, you know, he was tremendous in this series before that, and to <laughs> lose him – was was a loss he was a shooter he was a, a goal scorer and and it's uh it, it's very difficult to lose somebody like that especially under those circumstances um but you know going into that series you know <laughs> losing the first two games it was like devastating it was like oh yeah. no are you kidding me we got this far no no <laughs> um it's just like one of those things where you're where you're saying this cannot end this way. There's no way. This cannot end this way. Um, but um, I also remember in game six, which, by the way, was on last night. My wife and I watched a lot of it. Um, there was a play where, 
and I can't remember who, who initially, oh, I know who it was. It was Chara. Chara initially um, kind of pushed the puck into the Vancouver end, and he went and chased it. I have never seen Chara skate so fast in my life. As this guy came down, he hit one of the Vancouver guys right before the boards, hit another guy, and grabbed the puck. So he initially hit it first into their end and then went and chased it. My wife and I were like, what, what was that? <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> um, but that was, that was tremendous. I think, you know, uh, you know, especially in that particular game and the Bruins won five to two. Um, what happened was, is that Luongo, uh, there were, uh, two very quick goals with the first, I think yeah. minute or so less than, a, yeah. no, I think it was yeah. a couple minutes. I think a couple minutes within the first, uh, couple minutes of the game and they, they scooted Luongo out, um, <laughs> of the right. game and put in, That's right. yeah, they put in Schneider. Um, but once they put BC, 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 by the way, BC hockey. Yeah. Love Corey <laughs> nice, just just right, got to throw it in there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you got to throw it in. Of course. I get it. Um, and he played fairly well, actually. Um, but um, not as well as, you know, I think they scored on him within a minute or two of him being in there. And then it was three, nothing. And then, uh, and then it went on from there, and then it was a five to two win. But I just remember that very specifically, especially last night when we were watching it. I was like, "What? How did that just happen?" I mean, <laughs> and then my wife comments. She said, "Oh yeah, that that's when Char was actually fast." <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that was interesting. But um, but uh, I, I thought um, again, I, I think that. Um, I thought that series was, I thought it was a tough series. I didn't think it was an easy series to win. I thought that, I thought that, um, I, I think there was some fighting that was going on too. So oh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have to discuss that in a couple of minutes. Yeah. But my, my overall, my overall thought process was, is that once we lost the first two games, I was like, oh no. And then as they kept going, it's almost like they had this, wait a minute, superpower. Mm -hmm. Kyle, yeah. superpower? They had this almost <laughs> superpower that they came back and were, was able to come back to, you know, I always have a superpower reference every time I talk to you guys. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah. Specifically for Kyle. Specifically yeah. for Kyle. Uh, hence the fact that he's wearing a Superman uh, <laughs> shirt, a sweatshirt. Exactly. So that exactly. even more appropriate. Exactly. So I think, I think it was that that was the first part of it. The second part of it was um, was the fact that it was just just overpowering. It was one of those things where they're not going to do this to us. There's no way we're going to come back. We're going to get this done. And if you hear, they were kind of mic'd up a little bit, so you hear what Bergy or Bergy was saying. You hear what uh, Chara was saying. You hear what um, uh, Tim Thomas was saying uh, here and there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Tim Thomas played on his head during that series. Um, I thought the first two games were kind of this, almost like this learning process. But after those first two games, they were, Tim Thomas was on his head. I mean, unbelievable. Um, yeah. You know, I, the only thing I hated about Tim Thomas was when he came out of the goal. I always thought somebody <laughs> was going to trick him. Uh, but that's the way he played. So we were always real nervous when he came out. But, but again, I think that's my thoughts for that, for that, at least right now, for my initial thoughts for that series. Yeah, and Kyle's is, you know, I mean, again, Stanley Cup Finals, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And that series was, as Doug was just saying, Kyle, was quite the the physical sort of very intense, maybe a little bit chippy at times, but a very, very intense series. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just had a lot of, a lot of twists and turns to it, Kyle. Yeah, I would basically say so. I would, I would say uh, the best. Uh, I would say superhero analogy to that would be. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever had ever seen Superman two, right? So Superman gives up. His no, powers. I have not. <laughs> okay, so powers to be the most like. But then he realizes, oh, he just he, uh, you know, he gets beat up by this tougher dude, and he doesn't have his powers to defend himself. So he has to go back and walk all the way to the Fortress of Solitude, which okay isn't humanly possible because it's all the way up in the friggin' North Pole. But he goes back, and you think he's all defeated, right? 
So that was like the first two rounds. First two rounds, the first two games, that was, you know, Clark getting defeated by the guy in the diner. And then he finds the green crystal. Marlon Brando comes through, Jor-El. He says, hey, Superman, here your power is back. Boom. Comes back, you know, fights the evil Kryptonians at the end. Yeah, that was like the Bruins. That's, that's the best way I could say it. it you know, it's interesting. I, I haven't really heard that many people, you know, compare the Bruins winning the cup to uh, Superman two before. But, uh, you know, for you, that was the perfect analogy. Uh, that was the perfect analogy. Um, but yeah, Doug, I know you kind of talk about it. Yeah, Doug, it's why we got a little chat going on here. Doug saying <laughs> Superman rules or Su- or our man rules. Um, oh, but, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's all right. Um, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, there we go. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, Doug, just a couple of points to sort of finish up on that series. First of all, the physicality. Actually, you no, know I'll go with this point first. You know, the physicality of that series, sort of the, the tension and the chippiness of that series, I think just really what made it so exciting to watch because those two teams – for those type of games, legitimately did not like each other. I mean, and yeah, you can, you know, sort of talk about, well, you know, you know, LaPierre, you know, putting his glove in Marsha or whoever it was, his mouth or whatever, or by, you know, no, I'm sorry, it was LaPierre who bit his Bergeron. Bergeron. No, I'm Bergeron. sorry, LaPierre bit, bit his finger or something, you know, whatever you want to call it. They just sort of, both teams were sort of using semantics with yeah, that. Yeah, because Bergeron's going like this. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like you could just feel that tension the entire series. And that's what made it so much fun to watch. It's like I said, they just not they didn't like each other for the for that entire seven games. I mean, it was it was it was quite it was quite the battle of the watch. Yeah, it was very chippy, very chippy the whole um, the pretty much the whole time. Uh, the whole series, I would say every game was very, very chippy, especially after game two. Um, watching game six last night, it was really chippy. I mean, they were they were almost after every – almost after, you know, every time they came up and down the ice, somebody was hitting somebody else. Yeah. Um, so it was it was very, very chippy. And, and the thing I loved about it was – Marshand against one of the Sedin brothers. He was just, he was grabbing here and he's just hitting him in the face like this. And Sedin, and, and the ref was right there, but hitting him like this. And then, and then, and then, and then um, Sedin, Sedin was talking to the ref and going, look, he's hitting me. I'm like, dude, why aren't you hitting him back? <laughs> I, <don't understand. laughs> I mean, Sedin is kind of a, yeah, Sedin's kind of a tall guy. I mean, could he not reach yeah. him? I mean, maybe he's like, where is he? Where'd he go? I mean, I didn't understand that. But I thought that yeah. was that was phenomenal. That was great. I mean, that was just part of the the craziness in having Marshan be so young at the time, if you think about it. Um, you know, it, it's just just really very, very chippy series. And you know, if you're a hockey purist, exactly what you want to see. The, the problem with game six. Robbie and I, I'm not sure if you if if you really knew this, but um, it was Doc Emmerich that said that um, Game Six was had the most penalties in in a in a in a final series like oh, wow. ever. Wow. <laughs> the most penalty minutes um, for for both teams. It was incredible. Wow. It was like I wanted the refs just to let him play, just let him play. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, that's it was very chippy. No, I totally understand that. But if you're a hockey purist, you love that. Yeah, definitely. And the last thing I want to sort of touch on about that series, about the playoffs in general, actually, to both of you and Kyle, I'll start with you, is the play of Tim Thomas, um, you know, in goal for the Bruins. I mean, he won the Conn Smythe Trophy for the playoffs, most outstanding player. And he really was deserving because he just – you know, he just really stood on his head, as Doug was saying before, in some of those games, including in that final series. Uh, he just really was a big reason how they were able to, you know, to to get that cup, Kyle. And like I said, just played really well. Yeah, wait, no, I'm sorry. You said he was the goalie? Yeah. 
Tim Thomas. I kept thinking Tuka Rask was the goalie at that time, but... No, no, it was before Rask. Rask backup. was the backup at that time. Oh, he, oh okay, okay. So he, still, he was still on the team. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, I was just... Um, yeah, it was, it was a... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't really remember <laughs> um, the, the other guys <laughs> quite as much, unfortunately. So, Wait, uh, I, I think it was Superman. <laughs> he was playing in goal. <laughs> I'm just, i just busted on you. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, that, yeah, I, I can really com- contribute a whole lot to this uh, part as much because I don't quite remember him, but I'm, I'm sure he was doing great um, during that season too. <laughs> well, Doug, I know, I know you were just showing us your uh, the page from your. Uh, your little but your book there or whatever it was with Tim Thomas and a but uh yeah I mean just an incredible playoff run just in general for him not just the finals but just the playoffs in general he played really well Doug yeah he really did um uh, again some of the and you know what I I think they'll probably play the series again on uh, Nesson but you really got to... got nothing else to play. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> well, well, that's why I said they're probably going to be able to do that. But I think what it comes down to is, is that um, Tim Thomas, if you watch him very specifically, because, you know, you've maybe seen these games a couple of times, and even if you haven't, take a game and just watch, just watch Tim Thomas play. Watch how he finds the puck. There are guys in in today's league, even nine, ten years later, that are really tall and really big, and they don't give a lot of net up to anybody shooting. Tim Thomas was not a really tall guy. But if you watch him, if you watch him on the overhead, and they did a lot of overhead cam shots, if you watch him on the overhead, he gets down so low that he's able to see way above the guy who's even like next to him, he's right here. He's able to see that. So it, you got to watch him. You got to watch him come out and grab pucks and put pucks away. The saves were just unbelievable. He had a pretty good regular season too. He had a very good regular season. So just that particular year, you know how sometimes, sometimes you worry about Tuca. You know, he gets one goal and then all of a sudden – you're like, oh, geez, is he going to be a sieve tonight? Yeah. With Tim Thomas that year, especially during the playoffs, and even watching it last night, I watched game six last night, I was like, I know the outcome, obviously. I got the book. I know the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're going to win. I got it. But just watching him last night, I was not even nervous about whether he was going to have a score or two on him. Because he played off the hook. He, yeah. You don't even worry about that. With, with Tuca, sometimes you worry about it a little bit. I mean, he's fabulous. He's really great. Um, and a very good goalie. But there are times that he's not on. Tim Thomas was just on. Now, there were some goals that went in that probably shouldn't have. Um, you know, he's not perfect. But if you look at his percentage, you look at what, what he's really done, and you look at the playoff and you just watch him. Don't watch anybody else. Just watch him for like a period. Unbelievable. Just, yeah. just so good. <laughs> and what's, what's great is, is that he brings up the guys that are out there. He just does. He saves a puck. They're like, oh, my God, he just saved the puck. Now I have to score a goal. So, um, you know, he just played off the hook, Robbie. That's, that's just that, – that's all I can say. You know, I mean, just no, he, look. He certainly did, and I mean, just that whole, you know, like, like I said, that Bruins team in general, even a decade later, just sort of made memories and moments that will live in Boston sports lore, and uh, it's just, it's been, it's fun to sort of, you know, especially times like this when there's not a lot of current sports to talk about, it is a lot of fun to uh, to sort of reminisce about those teams, but there is actually a current Boston sports story that we do kind of want to touch on here, uh, you know, as we go towards the end of our episode. And that is today, but, you know, you didn't think the 2020 could get any crazier than it did. But uh, today, 
uh, Rob Gronkowski, uh, <laughs> Rob Gronkowski, um, it was announced that he is being traded from the Patriots to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and is coming out of retirement to reunite with Tom Brady in Tampa. And so I just, as long as I have both of you guys here, and Kyle, I'll start with you on this. Uh, I just want to sort of get your thoughts and reactions to Gronk. First of all, coming back, but second of all, coming back to join Tom Brady in Tampa. That was, um, that was surprising. I, I did not expect that. Um, I just remember today, like, <clears throat> going over it with my friend Ben, and we're just, like, looking at each other, like, what the hell just happened? Like, <laughs> it was just, like, I just, I didn't expect Gronk to come out of retirement, and I, I honestly thought that, I mean, I, I guess I'm not that surprised. Well, I don't know. It, it's, it's so, it's just so, like, I thought he would just come back. If he was going to come out of retirement, I thought he'd just go back to the Patriots. And I honestly thought, I think like we mentioned before, when we talked about Tom Brady was going to Tampa Bay, um, I thought Tom Brady was going to stay for the Patriots at least for like another year or so. But, you know, just all this like stuff kind of piling on, you know, it was, it was very surprising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really was. And Doug, same thing to you. I mean, just, I know it's just a couple hours old, this news, but What's your what's your reaction? What are your thoughts? Hey, Doug, Doug's got to unmute himself. No. Uh, we've lost Doug. Hello. Uh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, there you are. You're I'm, back. I was, I was, yeah, I was uh, moving the pages of the book around a little bit, so I didn't want to. I muted myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I was, I was not, I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't really surprised. Um, I, I, I just, I, I just, I, I wasn't surprised. I, I was, the issue is, is that, is that Gronk, Gronk's already had a year off and, you know, he's supposedly retired and he's supposed to be doing other things. So I, I wasn't surprised. I, I think on the flip side of it, I think Bill, did the right thing. He did the right <laughs> thing because because Gronk is not going to come back and play with us. So if yeah. he's not going to come back and play with us, what? And he's still got a year. Why not? Why get not something. trade him and yeah. get something for him? Because and yeah. that's that's a business decision. That's the best decision that he he could have made right now is to get True. something for Gronk, and instead of you know instead of just either letting him go or you know, just letting it run out or whatever, that was the best thing to do. Um, and I know, Robbie, you and I, you know, talked before we came on a little bit on the, the text about Gronk and about how I thought they probably could have gotten a little better for him. Uh, but I understand he's been off for a year, so it makes sense. But I think even a fourth round pick isn't that bad and we could definitely use that. So that's not not such a bad deal uh, to, to get somebody. Um, you know, so I don't think it's – was I surprised? No. I really wasn't surprised because of all the stuff that's going on, I, I just – I mean, in sports right now, especially in the NFL, I'm not surprised at all. Um, I do have a prediction, and this actually comes from my brother, and I'll predict this right now. Okay. You ready? Ready. Bring in your you, papers and, out, folks. Get your ready? pen and papers Here, out, folks. Yeah, Here we go. Yeah. Here's, here's the big prediction. Third game, Gronk gets hurt. Done for the season. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> With no, that, knowing him, nothing would surprise me. Knowing that's, him, nothing would surprise me. That's my me. prediction. That's my prediction. He's not in football shape. I don't think he's going to be able to get in football shape by the time they start, whatever, <laughs> uh, by the whenever that may start, and who knows when that's going to start. Um, I don't think he's in bad shape, but I don't think he's in football shape. But besides that, that that's my prediction is that I, I believe that he will get – I don't want him to get hurt. I mean, not seriously hurt, but out for the season hurt. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Second or I third think, game. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, it definitely is going to be very interesting seeing those two back together – Again, uh, in Tampa Bay, and again, I think it's just very, it's just very interesting how you know Tampa's building this uh, 
this team that is <laughs> by the way if you wonder why we're laughing Doug keeps adding to our chat that no one else could see <laughs> so um but yeah I think it's just you know with this yeah I think with the Super Bowl being in Tampa this year the Bucks are going all in on trying to try to get a title and uh they added another piece hey, uh, hey Robbie to the, Robbie yeah just just remember any team that's out there that wants our old stuff. They can have, you know, we got some old footballs. We have some, um, you know, 10, 15 year old uh, goalposts. We have, um, let's see, we have, we have, um, you know, paint that go, the white paint that they put down. Uh, we have some really, really old uh, c containers of that paint that the Bucks want seeds, that too. Old, old yeah, seeds. Yeah, we got some old yeah. seeds. We got some old stuff. So I'll tell you, anybody that wants our old players and our old stuff, you can have it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Whoa, that was freakish, Kyle. Oh, uh, Kyle. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kyle's moving around <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. All of a sudden, the camera just flips to Kyle. It's like, woo! Yeah. Wait a minute, Kyle. Can I ask you a question? Are you flying around your apartment? Yes. Don't tell mm -hmm. anyone. Okay? Don't tell anyone. Because because you look like you're flying around your apartment. I'm <laughs> hey, he's secretly Superman. What? No. You're not supposed to know that. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Don't tell anybody. But yeah, the, the, your secret's safe with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we won't we won't publish that. We'll, we'll edit no, that right out. Uh, no, no. Um, but so to serve to as we wrap up this edition of On the Couch Talking Sports, uh, as we always do, when we have a guest on mm -hmm. the episode. I want to give Doug a chance to uh, to lend some final thoughts. Uh, any final thoughts you might have, Doug? And you spelled super bad wrong again. Uh, any. Any final thoughts uh, to wrap up another appearance of yours here on the show? Well, my first thought is, is that I wish I could spell Superman. <laughs> that, is, that is my first thought. I'm only spelling it, let's see, one, two, three, four, at least four times, and I got the wrong two out of four. So I'm not doing too well right now. With the Superman thoughts. Uh, the Superman thoughts is not, not, not definitely not there. Um, I think, I think my final thoughts is, my final thought is, is that I love the fact that you guys are talking about the, the 2011, uh, Stanley Cup champion Bruins. I love the fact that you guys are talking about it because it really reminds me of, of my mother-in-law and good times and watching games and, and all I want to say is, is I'm hoping that we can get back to where we were before, which is to bring the sports back slowly and carefully and health wise, make sure everybody's okay. And hopefully we'll be able to bring sports back. I don't know whether sports, whether the NBA or the NHL will come back this year or not. Hopefully they will. We don't know, but um, you know, obviously with the times that are going on, you know, I, I, kudos to all the first responders and people that are out there. I know sports is secondary to what's going on in the world. Um, yeah. But what I, my thought is, is that when I think about that year and the Bruins, I have, I have good thoughts running through my brain. So uh, that, that's really what my final thought is. And everybody be safe out there. Definitely. And, and that, your final thought is actually kind of similar to my final Thought, which is, you know, yesterday was Patriots Day, and usually Patriots Day in sports are very synonymous, you know, with the running of the marathon and the Red Sox, you know, playing at home every year. And obviously, uh, you know, this year definitely had a different different tone to it, you know, with none of those things happening. Uh, but I don't think that you could still uh, – I don't think that you can – diminish though sort of the message of Patriots Day and what it means for the city of Boston the state of Massachusetts and how much it applies to what is going on right now and I think that you know Patriots Day is all about you know being united and being strong and you know just 
coming together and you know just it it really it really is indicative of what we need to do right now and sort of by staying socially distant and staying home and that does not mean we cannot be united and i think kind of even like what we're doing right now you know we're coming together even though albeit virtually and we're being you know we're sort of doing our part social distancing wise but we're also you know sort of being united and you know trying to sort of you know talk about sports that keep things somewhat positive and you know think hopeful thoughts towards the future and i think it's just very appropriate that Patriots Day was yesterday, even though, you know, there's no marathon and no Red Sox. Um, I think the message just really, you know, really holds firm, especially uh, in a time like this. So not to, not to get too, too sappy there, as Doug pointed out in the, in the chat, but uh, not to put you on blast there, Doug, but uh, he did spell lot, Superman. He, he did spell Superman though, right? Uh, so there's that but uh yeah i i agree with doug's point you know just you know want to give a shout out to the first responders and everybody out there keeping us safe and uh as front always, lines, we, will baby, get front lines. we will get through this and so i do want to throw it over to kyle uh to sort of lighten things up for us a little bit here after that sappy moment for uh another edition of the Sue's reviews and uh, maybe it'll be superman related maybe it won't be uh but kyle um, what uh what what is your Sue's reviews for this week well it's not gonna be superman related but uh i'll, I'll save that for next week i got a blu-ray set i wanted to review next week but uh this week i actually so this is a I wanted to review a video game, or actually I should say video games. It's actually a set. So I don't know if you guys remember the Nintendo GameCube. It was a console that was that's, you know, near and dear to my heart and to a lot of uh, Nintendo fans' heart as well. And um, what they did, so when the GameCube came out, they started uh, these doing these re-releases of Zelda. And one of the one of the releases that they had was uh, the, um, the Zelda promotional discs. So you're thinking, okay... It's a promotional disc. It's going to be boring. It's just like a demo, right? No, wrong. Here you go. So what we have here are actually four Zelda games that you can play. <laughs> so you can actually play the original two Zelda games, uh, Zelda, uh, what is it, Zelda and The Adventure of Link for NES. And you can also play Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. All four, of ga all four games which are incredible. Zelda 2, though, I, I got to say is, yeah, it's <laughs> old school. <laughs> the, 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 the first two games are very old. For, they, they originally came out for NES, um, for the original Nintendo back in the 80s. And um, the second one especially is very hard. So just, just to warn you, if, if you're going to get into this game right here in, in, in the, the second one, it's a very tough game. It's a side scroller. Um, it's gonna punish you. <laughs> um, but uh, Zelda, um, you know, especially Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are two of my all-time favorite video games. Not just like Zelda games, but just video games in general. Um, those are games I highly recommend playing. Especially, you know, you have it all on this disc, and um, it also actually this disc I forgot to mention also comes with a playable demo of uh, the Wind Waker, which is the uh, exclusive Zelda game for the GameCube itself. So it's it has a lot on this disc and I just gotta <laughs> Well, if you're looking for punishment games and yeah you're gonna love that you're gonna love Zelda too. So um so it all comes in look look how small this disc is. I just gotta uh, show this really quick. They fit all those games on this really, really tiny disc. Unbelievable, huh? Wow. It's too tiny. Wow. <laughs> yeah it's a baby disc. Baby baby disc <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just love the fact, Kyle, I do, I, I thank you for the review as always, Kyle. I love yeah, the fact that you continually throughout that were responding to Doug on the chat when I repeat, nobody can see what Doug is typing. So people just think <laughs> that you're answering random <laughs> questions. People are just like, why, why is he talking about, why is he like repeating old school, man, and making his punishment and saying it's so weird. Kyle was responding to things that Doug was typing in the chat that again, nobody can see on this. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there 
Just so people Robbie, don't think they're them, kind of, You're telling them all our tricks, Robbie. You're telling them I, all I, the I, tricks. I, I, I'm, I'm, pull, I'm pulling back the curtains here. You know? Transparency. Break, Transparency. I'm breaking, I'm breaking the fourth wall, you know. Uh, but anyway, thank you, Kyle, for that review, as always. Great no review, problem. as Doug and I both say. Um, yes. So uh, that is going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Audi Cow Talking Sports. Doug, always appreciate you coming on, man. Great to talk Bruins with you and Gronk and all that other stuff. You know, stay safe out there. Stay healthy. And, uh, like hey, I said, guys, really, I just really, really – Hey, listen, it. Robbie, Robbie, I just want to say thank you very much for having me on. I love doing On the Couch, talking sports. It's awesome. Hey, remember, we – Robbie and I have a show, too, so – you know, listen sports, to that. Yeah, yeah, check it sports out. Blitz yeah. and sports Blitz, too. So I love being on. Thank you guys for um, having me. And uh, anytime you want me to come back, I will be back. I love this show. Perfect. Well, we love having you. And uh, so that's going to do it for this week's edition of On My Couch Talking Sports. For Kyle, I'm Robbie, signing off here from the couch. We will see you next time here on On My Couch Talking Sports. Bye, everybody. Yeah. See you.